Hi everyone, my name is Belly Renata and welcome to my channel. For today I have prepared a really fun project and when I say fun, I refer to all of you who enjoy experimenting with textures and making beautiful backgrounds. So stay with me and let's have some fun! This time I didn't want to start with a blank white page, so I decided to add some texture using old book pages, some scrapbooking papers and tea dyed notebook paper. Now depending on the effect that you want to go for, you can tear your papers in various manners. I wanted it more natural and random. But another idea is to tear strips of papers or little squares and each of those options is beautiful in its own way and I think it's just a matter of personal preference. Another thing which I would like to mention, you can see that I am choosing really neutral tones when I am going with my scrapbooking papers. I didn't want any bold, strong colors or very, or very bold patterns. I just wanted it to be discreet, but still there. And that way it is easier to later achieve the colors that I want. But then again, that can also be an option, just it achieves a bit a uh, different effect. And never forget that you can always push down your patterns if you find them too bold using gesso. Anyway, you can see here I'm trying to figure out some kind of uh, layout for my papers and then I will adhere them all using a matte medium. Here you can see my background already nicely adhered and dry, so it is time for next step adding gesso. Now, probably some of you will recognize I put too much gesso, way too much, and I didn't want to cover my patterns this much, so I am using wet tissue to remove some extra gesso. Of course, uh, occasionally I remove too much, so I am going back with my brush, trying to find some kind of uh, balance where I do want patterns pushed down everywhere, I want them still to be peeking through. And here again you can have options of the effect that you want to achieve. You can try to make uh, something with uh, more brush strokes or here where I was actually trying to make my uh, gesso application look more random and not to be seen any of the brush strokes. Now of course uh, off camera I will clean my craft mat and dry my page using a heat gun before I move on to the next step, which is heat embossing. For that I will use this uh, paper artsy stamp designed by Seth After, and I will do heat embossing using a clear embossing powder, as I wanted it to serve as a resist for my paints, but I think in this case uh, white embossing powder would have worked uh, with a very similar effect. Now again, depending of your personal taste, you could choose for this uh, project a gold embossing powder, I think it would have looked uh, really pretty as well. <laughs> but uh, to be honest, at this point, I still didn't have a clear image of what effects I am going for. This uh, project, I can say it was really intuitive and just, I was just enjoying my mediums, my product, it was just me having fun. Here you can see me heating my embossing powder, but the effects of that will be noticed a bit later, but soon, soon, soon when I add some colors. But let's add some more texture first. This is a very beautiful product, which I have uh, here actually tested, never used it before. It is a structure paste, uh, which has a tiny, tiny little crystal pearls in it. And it gives just such an amazing, amazing effect. Perhaps you have noticed it uh, when you just saw my intro for this project. Anyway, you can see I'm using a palette knife and I'm applying it randomly. 
but still being careful not to cover my heat embossed pattern. The best way to dry this is to let it uh, dry naturally without using the heat gun because very often when using a heat gun you can uh, make this texture paste bubble up. Now again I will say that can be a part of the texture. It can look really fun but this time I did not want that effect so I let it dry naturally and it took Oh, I think uh, at least an hour or so. Anyway, in case of this texture paste, I noticed that it dry when these uh, very strongly white parts became more translucent and the little uh, pearls in it can be noticed better. Here I'm trying to catch the light so you can notice all the textures that happened. And of course you can notice perhaps a little bit of heat embossing and how my texture base became transparent. Anyway, now time for some color. Today I decided to work with uh, Paper Artsy, Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylics. And the first color that I'm working with at the moment it's called Surf's Up. Also you can notice I'm applying really a lot of water because I wanted that natural flow of color, something almost like watercolor effect, just really permanent. Between each color I will dry the previous one with the heat gun and the next color that I will work with is called Sugar Plum. This way that I have dried the previous color they won't blend, instead they will just layer one upon the other. The third color of my choice is called Autumn Fire. Now, while this is a really beautiful, beautiful color, it wasn't exactly what I wanted for this project. And uh, I will uh, use really fun technique to alter this color a bit later, but uh, I won't give any spoilers yet. Now, at this point, I was done with acrylics, but not with colors. So now I will use Paper Artsy Infusion. This one is called Just Walnut, and I have diluted it with water in this little spray bottle. And this will give just a little bit of a vintage touch to my project. Now to add some stamping. This is a beautiful stamp set from Paper Artsy designed by Joffy, but this time I will only use the text part from it to add some more background interest, as I have covered those book pages pretty much at this point. Now, off camera, I will trim my page to fit uh, the black card background. I have used Tim Holtz Deckled Trimmer for this. And uh, here I'm just trying to check out how it looks. And of course, here are my focal images. 
I have colored them quite some time ago, so I couldn't show the process. But uh, these images are also from one of the paper art stamp set that I will link in the description box down below. But now, time for some more background texture. And this is a really fun one as well. As you might have noticed, I am applying Pantar 3D glue. And it's the one which works with uh, metal foils. Now I'm applying it using a brush, pretty much randomly, but still, here you can notice that I left my images on the paper so I can plan kinda where my foils will go. Here I am applying the glue in very thin layers, so it will be dry almost instantly. But later on I will add some dots and they will take a little bit more time to dry, maybe 20 minutes or so. Just be patient and don't use heat gun because this glue bubbles up really really easily. Okay, so now the parts where I applied the glue with the brush was dry. Not the dots, as you can see, they are still white, which means they are still not dry, but I was impatient and started working. Here you can see how pretty, pretty result it has. And I decided to use uh, gold foil, as I already had some little gold details on my moths. And the reason that I'm saying that is that I usually enjoy making my backgrounds and uh, focal images have some connecting element and mostly it's a connecting color. In this case on both my background and uh, focal images you will notice the blue tones, some gold, even later on a little bit of uh, yellow and a little bit of reddish tones, but that you will notice soon. Okay, so I told you I want to correct that uh, autumn fire color, so I decided to use a Neo Color 2 for that. They are really so easy to work with. Here I am uh, smudging them a bit, but you can use uh, water, I just wanted not to smudge them too much. And I felt, have you noticed how on my uh, candle lights I have these uh, fires? Well. I felt like my background needs a little bit that yellow reddish tone, so this is what I'm going to do now. First I went with adding this yellow because I think it goes nicer with my blue tones. But very soon I will add just a touch of red too. And here is the red color, this one is called Scarlet. The yellow one was called Golden Yellow. And I am finally becoming really satisfied with my background. I think this color much better fits my focal images than the previous one.
now my background was mostly done. Later on I will add just one tiny detail, but I was really really happy with how it looked here. I was happy with that change of tone with the yellow and red, with those uh, golden foils, with a little bit of embossing. Honestly, I am really really happy with how this turned out. Anyway, now I will adhere my page to my black cardstock. I will cover those little holes, they won't be seen. And you can also notice that I have already adhered the foam tape on the back of my focal images as I wanted just a little bit of the dimension on them. It was actually the thinnest foam tape that I could find on the market. But I won't bore you with the adhering process, so let's move on to the next step. Adding these little tiny details. And now, to emphasize my heat embossed areas and my textures, I will use a white nail color too. And with a very, very minimal pressure, I will go over these textured areas and I still think it really, really helped emphasize those beautiful textures that I have achieved. Particularly those heat embossed areas and those little pearls from the texture paste. Now off camera, I will add a quote and that's about it for this project. Honestly, I have really enjoyed creating it. It is sometimes fun to go without particular plan and just see where the colors and textures take you. Of course, as usually, I can't resist saying I hope I manage to inspire you and have a nice crafty day. See you soon. Bye.